Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate St. Bridget, who died in 1373, a mother of eight. And many times I've said, if you're a mother of eight, I think that's immediate canonization right there, you know. And, uh, but in addition to that, of course, uh, a mystic, a prophet, and foundress of a religious order, commonly known as the Bridgetines. She lived in the time pe- period following the Avignon Papacy, where we had two individuals declaring to be Pope. And she was calling for reform and uh, end of the, if you will, luxury that was going on at that time period within the papacy to restore the papacy to Rome. So uh, we celebrate her this day. We bring our needs, our intentions, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves to come to the altar once again worthily and celebrate the sacred mysteries we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who guided St. Bridget of Sweden along different paths of life and wondrously taught her the wisdom of the cross as she contemplated the passion of your Son, grant us, we pray, that walking worthily in our vocation we may seek you in all things. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ray, and I will be doing the reading this morning. And the first is a reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance, that dwells apart in a woodland in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old. As in the days when you came from the land of Egypt, show us wonderful signs. Who is there like you, the God who removes guilt and pardons sin for the remnant of his inheritance? Who does not persist in anger forever, but delights rather in clemency? and will again have compassion on us, treading underfoot our guilt, you will cast into the depths of the sea all of our sins. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and grace to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. The word of the Lord. Rasmansorial Psalm. Lord, show us your mercy and love. Lord, show us your mercy and love. You have favored, O Lord, your land. You have brought back the captives of Jacob. You have forgiven the guilt of your people. You have covered all their sins. You have withdrawn all your wrath. You have revoked your burning anger. Lord, show us your mercy and love. 
Restore us, O God, your Savior, our Savior, and abandon your displeasure against us. Will you be ever angry with us, prolonging your anger to all generations? Lord, show us your mercy and love. Will you instead give us life? And shall not your people rejoice in you? Show us, O Lord, your kindness, and grant us your salvation. Lord, show us your mercy and love. Speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak with you. But he said in reply to the one who told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Forever who does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Suppose we have two different themes really in the readings today. In the first reading, of course, the prophet Micah, almost continuing on uh, one of the themes of, of uh, Sunday's readings and that of shepherding. If you think back to Sunday, we heard about leadership and, and Jeremiah was prophesying against the leaders of his time, the 6th century B.C., that they were not being good Shepherds, they were not leading the people. They were looking after their own gain. And, of course, uh, Micah here lives in the midst of the Israelite community that is surrounded by pagan culture and, and pagan gods. Not that our current time period would know anything about a pagan culture or pagan gods. Uh, hopefully you caught the sarcasm this early in the morning. It's maybe not that different of a time period that we live in either, that we have um, more and more a pagan culture. We focus on the Diocese of Buffalo, and so does the news, but every religious denomination has the exact same issue that we have, further and further away from faith, fewer and fewer people attending worship, and so a growing pagan culture. Hmm? And uh, I suppose we also have our pagan gods. Maybe the pagan god of 
of money, the pagan god of power, the pagan god of the internet, the, you know, list can go on. The things that become more important than worshiping the Lord. We think about Mike and his call to shepherd the people, really, and uh, the call of the truth, and the truth, the mercy of God. Micah's time may be not that different than our own, and the call is the same, the truth of God, the mercy of God, the love of God. And that uh, continues on in Matthew's Gospel. A lot of, a lot of ink has been spilled on these, uh, this particular passage. You know, we, we hear Jesus' mother and brothers are there. Whose mother and brother? Well, anyone who does the will of the Lord. Mother and brother who does the will of the Heavenly Father. You know, um, our church teaches that Mary was perpetually into eternity a virgin. I have no problem believing that. So many people fight that in, in uh, circles today. But what is the deeper meaning of this particular passage? You know, do we focus on unity or division? Well, division takes an awful lot of energy. Unity generally provides us with energy and strength. Do we focus on uh, recognizing each other, really, as mother and brother and sister? Or do we focus on creating estrangements? Estrangements cause us to lose a lot of energy. Whereas focusing on mother and brother and sister usually provides us with a lot of energy and love. I know uh, I, especially in my life as a priest, I have many, many mothers that have come forward over the course of time to uh, be that role of mother in my life, particularly since my own mother has passed away. I know I call many, many men in my life my brother, brothers from another mother, and we support one another in faith. We pray for one another. We challenge one another, as brothers should do. And uh, the same, too, many others who I call sister in my life, because we have similar relationship of faith. It takes a lot less energy to recognize each other as mother, brother, and sister than create divisions and create walls. And so today, as we look at this reading, we really think, who, who are those mothers in our life? Who are those brothers from another mother? Who are those sisters in our life who uh, make and enrich our lives and call us to be more than we currently are, to love us, to challenge us, to support us? I believe that's really where the Lord is calling us, to that sense of unity and not division, the focus of love and the power it creates rather than hatred and the division and the energy it absorbs. We think about that as we turn, we offer our needs, our intentions to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do come before you knowing that we live in a time maybe very similar to Micah with pagan worship as well as pagan gods. We focus on you, the one true God, and the unity that you call us to abide within. Please hear our needs and petitions. Help us on our way. For the church throughout the world, for all of her leaders and members, that we do strive as the baptized body of Christ to recognize one another as mother, brother, and sister, to abide within that unity. We pray to you, Lord. For those who have asked us for prayer, especially those in need of healing, we pray for those recovering from surgeries. Pray for those waiting for or undergoing medical tests. We pray for those in long-term care, those who may be near life's end, for their healing and hope in that power. We pray to the Lord. Thanksgiving for all of the many blessings that we possess in our nation and then within our church, for the many blessings which unfolded through our parish mission last week and the many programs for our young people going on throughout the summer here at St. Greg's. 
We pray in thanksgiving for the success of our mission team and their return from Jamaica and their service. And thanksgiving for all of the abundant blessings that we have as we live and abide in our life of faith and for unity in our family of parishes and uh, our diocese at this time. We pray to you, Lord. And for the safety of all travelers, for all of the needs and intentions in the lives of others, we promise to pray for those in search of employment and for an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. We pray to you, Lord. And for the renewal of our understanding of the Eucharist in light of the Eucharistic Congress last week that uh, we may rediscover in particular this coming year the real presence of our Lord, body and blood, soul and divinity. We pray to you, Lord, for Camille Morath, for whom the Mass uh, is uh, offered today, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed to share in God's mercy and eternal life, we pray to you, Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you the many needs, those we have spoken and those that we treasure in our hearts. As always, we ask you, please hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate, blessed Bridget, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all that we do. And so, Lord, with the angels and the saints, we too give thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew full, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Bridget, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on the feast day of blessed Bridget, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. go in peace. Have a good day, everyone.